Welcome to AC Fundamentals as Complex Quantities with Dr. Ken Meyer. This lesson is made up of 41 slides and is built on Electrical Principles by Peter Phelps, particularly the third edition. That's where most of the slides come from, even though I have made some of my own to add some more interest and a little bit more detail. We're not going to present all 41 slides in one big lesson. We've broken it up into five sections. So this is section one, and we're just dealing with slides one to five in this first section. So about the overall picture, the big picture of the lesson, lesson uh, despite the popularity of DC power at the time, AC power is the standard practice today, with the first AC power stations going into service in the early 19, sorry, 1890s. Got that little bit back to front. So the overall lesson, we're going to look at what is a complex quantity. We're going to introduce you to alternating currents and voltages, which are complex quantities. We're going to describe how an alternating voltage is actually generated and then we're going to explain how to find current and voltage values in AC circuits using waveforms, phasor diagrams and a little bit of algebra. So this is the bigger picture, this is the, the five lessons. We're going to do the first one, 15.0, complex quantities. The next lesson will be Introduction to AC in and of itself. Lesson two, Waveforms. Number three, the sine wave itself. And then finally, sine wave values. So what makes AC difficult? And difficult it seems for many students. It's not complex, it's just having to deal with a quantity that uh, firstly, you can't sense it directly. You can't hear, touch, taste, or smell, or see electricity. And this makes it difficult to deal with because we have to constantly use abstraction skills because we can't directly sense it. Therefore, we're dealing in the abstract from the very start. And the best way to deal with abstract concepts is to be able to build some great mental models. Now yes we're going to build some mathematical models, we're going to build some graphics models using phasor diagrams which are all very helpful. But as time goes on I'm hoping to introduce to you at the beginning of each major lesson segment some ways that you can go about improving your mental modeling capacity and in doing that improve the way that you can handle these complex quantities that are real physics, but abstract to our senses. So we have to find ways to measure and model what is happening. The way we measure it is we use instruments like a voltmeter to measure electrical pressure or voltage. We use ammeters to actually see what the current flow is. You can't put your hand on the wire and feel the electrons running through the wire, so we need an ammeter to show us what the flow is. We use things like watt meters to demonstrate the amount of electrical energy that is being used. So now to make things just a little harder, AC is what we call a complex quantity. That is to say each quantity has two dimensions associated with it. Just as like wind is measured in speed, kilometers per hour, or sorry, knots per hour or kilometers per hour, and direction from the north, the south, the east, the west. So electrical AC quantities have magnitude, for example, wind with its speed, but our magnitudes tend to be voltages and currents and things. But we also have direction associated with those quantities. It's just that you have to learn to deal with a quantity that you're not used to using. You're using, used to using singular quantities not two-dimensional quantities. The electrical quantities are still called current, voltage, resistance, etc. But now we have to introduce direction. And that direction is normally measured in degrees from zero 
to 360 degrees. So quite often you'll discover that a voltage has an angle associated with it when compared to the current through say a series circuit. So I've got a little example here of wind and you can see here that uh, wind is measured in speed and in wind direction. So I've got a uh, little video, I can't put the link on here because it won't record, but I shall put it with the lesson so you can actually click on wind as a complex quantity. And here's an example with boats, ships and things the like. They also have speed, forward, and they have a heading in degrees, 0 to 360. So a boat as it navigates across the ocean also has a complex quantity that describes its speed and its direction all in the one value. So you can see here with a sailing boat, if you have a wind of 10 knots against the side and 5 knots of motion against, you actually end up with an apparent movement across here. So you actually have these complex quantities that have both magnitude, as in knots of wind, and from a certain direction. So this one here, 10 knots of true wind against the thing, is probably coming in from the north against the boat, and but from the east we have 5 knots of wind, which is going to end us up with a angle and a vector quantity it's called. So also for a bit of fun I've given you a link to some videos of uh, ships crashing for fun uh, as they beach them. Again speed and direction is the issue here. So this is one of the common quantities you don't realize you probably interact with most days when you look and listen to the weather report. Wind is always given as a speed and a direction Wind is a complex quantity.